All right, so I just wanted to show a little something custom I've been working on for the last uh, week or so. Uh, so someone contacted me and was curious if I could make them a custom scanner that would, uh, you know, show some stuff on a... Um, I think he's going to put this in a Volkswagen or something like that. But he's got a newer car. It's obviously not a Jeep or a Renix or anything like that. But he had a bunch of sensors uh, laying around and he wanted to attach them to his vehicle and monitor them. So... I introduced the uh, first ever uh, mini engine monitor. So this guy, this right here is just a screen. It's got auto dim, and it's got all the inputs that he needs for uh, for this guy right here. So we're using a, a Teensy LC for this. I needed 3.3 volt for the um, uh, the logic, which we'll go over in a second. But we've got some voltage dividers in here, some protection circuits. We got a 12 volt um, regulator fuses, screen stuff, all that goodness. So yeah, pretty clean. I'm getting uh, better at making these little custom one-off projects. But yeah, we have uh, a temperature sensor here, which he's going to use to monitor his coolant. So that's a resistive circuit. Um, we have a map sensor. It's a four-bar map sensor, so this is able to measure boost as well as vacuum. Uh, I have a little code in there, so uh, it'll take a reading uh, when the engine's off. Uh, to zero it out, so that way you can see, um, instead of an absolute number, you just get a relative number that's useful. You can see how many pounds of boost you have over atmosphere. Next down here, this is an interesting one. He's got a, an exhaust gas uh, temperature probe right here, and this is actually a thermocouple, so I needed to include a um, proper thermocouple driver over here. I got this from Adafruit. So this is their Max uh, 31850. It is a one-wire uh, circuit that'll read in the thermocouple and send that over here. So I downloaded their one-wire uh, library, and it seems to work pretty well. Only problem is it's uh, about an 800 millisecond update time, so I actually have it throttled. I only update it, like, I think once a second or whatever, so that the other readings can update faster in pulses. And finally, uh, finally the PSI. We got one of these uh, 0 to 100 PSI um, pressure uh, sensors which are good on all sorts of liquids, fuel, oil, um, transmission fluid, and other stuff like that. But yeah, this uh, this classic guy right here, you can find them all over eBay, 0 to 100 PSI. And that's um, that's an easy one. You know, this one just outputs a voltage, uh, so does the map sensor. And then we just do the math so that we can display it. But yeah, that is our, uh, our little mini engine monitor right there, running off a 12-volt feed. So everything seems to work good. And did I mention uh, auto dim? If I can, uh, there you go. So that way at night, it's a little easy to look at. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, that in a nutshell. So that took about a week of uh, messing around. And uh, we'll go over some of the other uh, fun stuff with that. If you ever want to um, make a custom project like this, the first thing to do for sure is to make a, uh, a wiring diagram of some sort because it just it, it's uh, it makes it a lot easier to uh, figure out you know everything that actually has to be done when you can lay everything out on paper you're not trying to keep it in your head it's uh, it's a lot easier to you know just figure it out so over here we have our teensy and um, we've got a display our uh, light sensor circuit um, our contrast circuit for the LCD uh, for the map. It's a 5 volt output, so we need a voltage divider to cut that down. Same for the oil pressure sender, we got a 5 volt divider. Now the EGT, uh, this one just needs a 3.3 uh, a volt pull up on the data line, so we have that supplied. And the temp sensor actually gets pretty interesting. So the actual temp sensor is going to go to ground, and we only need this... Um, this uh, it's not really a pull up resistor, it's a, it's a reference resistor. Okay, so this gives us a voltage and a um, and a known resistor value, and then this one is going to create the rest of the uh, voltage divider circuit. So by knowing the voltage and one of the resistors, we can calculate what the second resistor is. Then we can uh, convert that into a temperature through some other complicated stuff. Now, uh, temperature sensor circuits like this have bit me in the ass uh, in the past with people blowing up units, so we have some protection. Uh, usually I'll put a diode straight into there so the voltage can still go through but the problem is you have to calibrate for the diode drop and it's not you know as clean it's it's really annoying and it's ugh. so i'm trying a different setup this time here we have a um 
a, uh, a resettable polyfuse, and a Zener diode, which is going to uh, just limit the voltage down to 3.3 volts. So that way, say someone puts 12 volts in, this Zener diode is going to be drawing a hell of a lot of current, and it's going to pop this fuse to like a slow amount. So that way, this diode will be able to sync all the uh, the current and it'll be limited by this fuse. You can also do this with a resistor, but I didn't want to use a resistor because that would throw off the, the value, so you'd have to incorporate it and all that crap, so whatever. But yeah, so there's that. I have the jack laid out over here. We have our four sensor inputs. We have 12 volt in, we have five volt out on our ground, so we have a free pin just for fun. And then here's the regulator, just another fuse that'll protect our 12 volt line and our five volt line and all that. Input, output, ground, piece of cake really. Nothing too complicated. So all of that business fits into the back of this device. And I'm actually using uh, one of the uh, the proto boards from uh, Adafruit. I just cut them to length. If you notice that top power rail, I actually cut all the uh, the strips that I need, um, just so I can I can put the uh, LCD in there, and uh, it's all good to go. So. I actually drilled an extra hole so that the um, this jack would fit in there very nice. I bent the uh, the pins so that they actually fit. It's a little messy, but you know you can make it work. Another fun thing is uh, you'll notice we have surface mount components in here as well. So this right here is a surface mount potentiometer. What a little freaking bastard that is! So we got it sitting on the positive, the negative, and the uh, the output pin that's going over to the LCD. You got some other pins over here, some wires and jumpers. Also got creative because we've got some main top pins, but this LCD is dual row, so the bottom row is actually used on a couple things. Um, especially over here, if you can see those, two of the pins are at the bottom there. But yeah, we've got some resistors over there. That's our uh, protection zener diode. Service mount fuse going in there, service mount fuse, service mount capacitors, and voltage regulator. And we got some heat shrink to keep all the resistors safe. So yeah, that took a couple days to put together and, you know, figure it all out, but I think it'll work. Especially for a one-off. Gotta do what you gotta do. In the case, um, due to where the TNT was mounted, I had to make a giant hole for the USB, so that kind of sucks. But everything else is pretty clean. I can't really complain too much. So while we're here, let's also go over the uh, the code just real quick. Just so you can see, um, you know, the basics of what goes into this. <clears throat> so there's not a whole lot. Um, I wrote down this, uh, the customer request so I could figure out what needs to be done. We have our library includes over here. So you can see what, what our libraries are. We have all our pins, uh, set out. And just a couple tiny little, um, global variables that we need. So we start up the light. We start up the LCD screen. We start the, um, uh, the, uh, the thermocouple, uh, library. And then here's our uh, map um, zero right here. So that's all the startup code, real easy. Then we move on to the loop. Loop's pretty easy. We have a, a 15 uh, millisecond uh, timer for the display. So it, it, um, it loops every 15 milliseconds. And uh, it's pretty simple. We've got a the timer over here is reset uh, every time it starts. So that just keeps the timer code running. We've got a counter, which is used to throttle the EGT reading. Uh, just a simple thing, instead of having to use another timer, we'll just use 32 counts of this initial timer to offset it. So we've got our screen dim check here. Uh, you notice everything in here is in um, uh, functions, just to make the main code clean. So it's easy to see from a distance. So we check for the screen dim, then we set our cursor, we print our thing. So we have, uh, I've got two functions in here. I've got something called int print, which actually it's an integer print. It adds the spaces automatically, so you tell the variable that you want to print and how many uh, spaces you want to have. So this can uh, space up to four uh, different digits. So we have a get temp function, and then we'll print the water temp reading. Then we'll move over, same with the boost, EGT, and the oil pressure. And that's it. So it prints the four things over and over again, and that's that's it. So then all the complicated stuff is in the background here. So things like get temp... Getting temperature is hard, okay? It's, uh, after doing that fan controller thing, I learned a lot about this. So we're actually using the proper Steinhardt Hart NTC thermistor uh, equation. So I have a, a thing online. So actually, let me show you the uh, the way that we do that. So over here, uh, this is all the um, 
the ranges of all the sensors. So I was actually able to track down the temperature sender and there was a nice little temperature to um, uh, resistance chart. So we can chart that and figure out uh, all the stuff there. Then we go into here and I actually have this website up here, this Think SRS thing for this uh, thermistor calculator. And uh, you put in three different temperature points and it'll spit out uh, the uh, these three coefficients, the Steinhardt coefficients. So we type that in, I have them expand the values, and then we do all the complicated math to break it down. This gives us Celsius, uh, and then I have just a little uh, Fahrenheit calculation so that it spits that out. So if you notice up here, first we have a reading for analog reading. Um, it's an analog average, so it will read in that because um, I always like to average the analogs just to try to filter some noise. So this actually uses uh, 32 samples, so it'll sit here in a loop. It'll read it in 32 times in a row, and then divide it by 32 to get a nice average. We spit that out. And then after the average, then it does an ohm conversion for this one. So if we get onto the ohm convert, this one's actually really easy. So we take our uh, maximum analog uh, value, 1023, and divide it by the input, and then subtract it by 1 to... Uh, I think it inverts it or something. I don't know. This was provided by Adafruit. Then we type in our reference resistor here and divide it by that, and we have our ohm calculation. So that way, ohms go into here, and uh, yeah, that's solid. Uh, the next one, the get boost, that one's actually fairly easy, uh, but it is a smart sensor, so it has a, a high and low cutoff. So if you look here, uh, zero bar is actually a quarter volt, and four bar is 4.85 volts. So we actually have to um, make a little cutoff. So you have to subtract the uh, the initial range here and then just do a, um, since it's a linear um, thing, we can just do a simple conversion. So yeah, right here we have our analog reading. So that's this. We turn that analog reading into a voltage. And then what we do is in here, we subtract the that 25, uh, that quarter volt. So we have a proper zero. And then we divide it by our maximum range, which would be 4.6, once we factor in that we're subtracting that. And then this right here is just, uh, this gives us bar, but we want PSI, so I have it converting it to PSI. And then uh, it spits that out, so that's easy. So like I said, by using these functions, it's easy. So you can mess around with the, the, the fancy math here, and then in the main code, it's very clean, and you can just go, okay, switch this around or do whatever. It's, it's just easier to manage that. Same with this, the EGT. This one, so if the delay count equals one, so it'll only do this once every, you know, however many loops you tell it, tell it to get a new temperature. So it'll request a temperature and then it'll print the, um, the temperature uh, like that. And I have a little cutoff because if you don't have a sensor in here, there could be range issues. So I have, if, if the range is too high, just set it to zero. Uh, oil PSI, that's another one that's a smart sensor. So over here, this one's a little simpler. Zero is uh, half volt and 100 is 4.5 volts. So very easy, very linear. So we can just go into here and um, it's the same exact thing. So we average our reading, we convert it from 1023 or analog raw into voltage. The reason why it's 4.851 is because that is the actual um, voltage divider max output. So at 3.3 volts, this will be the input voltage. So we're converting it into volts, then we're taking the volts and converting it into PSI, and then we can strain so it can only be 0 to 100. That just makes the sensor a little cleaner. Um, yeah, also we got our screen dim, so this is um, also fairly simple. So I have an exponential averaging function in here. This is really dead nuts simple. It's great. It's uh, an impulse, uh, infinite impulse response. So this guy right here, it's just, uh, we have our alpha number, which is zero to uh, one. So it's a decimal. That's how much averaging there is. One is no averaging and like zero is infinite averaging or whatever, 0 0.1. But yeah, we just take our input and we uh, compare it to a factor of the previous old input here. And um, through this, it just it just averages. It's great. It's really simple. So yeah, that's our averaging function for that. But we average it um, more than just a regular. So we analog average it for an uh, instant average reading, and then we also do this for a longer extended period average, just to make it um, you filter it so that way it's not so jumpy. So then we have a little simple flag here. If the dim flag is false and the light sensor is below our threshold, make it true and write the pin low. 
lower. It's it's an analog uh, P, uh, PWM output, so we can dim it without it being completely off. And same here, if the dim flag's true and we're over our value, then set it false and set it high. You know, pretty simple. Nothing too complicated. Uh, and then down here, here's our print uh, function. So this is pretty nasty. It could probably be a lot cleaner, but it's just a shitload of uh, if statements. So if our value is less than this thing and our significant value is this number, so this is the thing. Our significant is how many bytes do we want to, or I'm sorry, how many units do we want to um, space out. So to look if this is good and that's good, it'll space and it'll just print a bunch of spaces to uh, to pad. It's a space pad. Same with here, except it does the same thing with floats. So float values, um, it'll also set how many decimal places you want on top of the, um, the significant bytes. And that's pretty much it. So that way, no matter what, it's always in the same spot. Uh, this is all just to write justify. Because, you know, it's easy to left justify, but right justify is how we as, you know, humans actually look at our numbers. So it's important, okay? But yeah, so this was about a week's worth of work to lay out the um, the circuit diagram, to figure out the code, uh, to map everything out, to wire it all up, make our 3D cases and all that, because that's some other fun stuff, is I had to make a custom case for this. Uh, it's just friction fit. There's uh, little nubs in there that catch the uh, uh, the circuit board. All press fit. Same with this adapter. This is a, I actually, this used to be a TFC adapter that I bastardized into a, you know, something that would work for us. But yeah, if you ever wanted to make a, your own custom Arduino project for some kind of vehicle scanner or other, you know, many uh, inputs, all you gotta do is figure out how to interface them to the board and uh, wire it up. You'd be amazed what you can do with free software, man. Arduino, free. Fritzing, free. I use Tinkercad for 3D uh, files. Another three free. You know, they're simple and they're basic, but you can get some pretty cool results out of it. Um, now, it does help to buy, like these were some aftermarket sensors. They actually provide you uh, an actual output, which is nice. If they don't, you have to test it by hand. That's kind of a pain in the butt. Same with this guy. So this is the instructions for it. Tells you all the stuff. And then here's the math. And they actually give you a nice chart of all the um, the PSI to the voltage. Nice and linear. That's what we like. Uh, he actually sent me... So with that temperature sensor, this was a, a trans temperature or whatever. Uh, but he just gave me the gauge. So if we had to back probe the gauge, you take a, a potentiometer and set it at different resistance uh, values. And then you look and see what the temperature is. So you make a big long chart of that. Uh, so that way you can um, you can reverse engineer the uh, the math that way. So that's another way to do it. As long as you can figure out what three of the temperature uh, resistance points are, you can use that uh, Steinhardt Hart uh, equation to completely figure out a temperature thing, and it's awesome. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And the EGT we didn't have to figure out; we just knew it was a K-type thermocouple. So we have a K-type thermocouple driver on one wire circuit, and that library that I downloaded from Adafruit does everything else for us. So yeah, there you go. That's it in a nutshell. So I'm going to send this off, and uh, we're going to see if our customer is happy. It's nice to do custom projects every now and then. Just, you know, a little something different from the norm. When I have time, anyway. I've always got crap to work on. Ugh. Busy, busy, busy. All right, that's all for now. See ya.